Welcome back, folks, to Eternal Crusader, where we talk all things dark fantasy, Robert E. Howard, and sword and sorcery in general. And today, we're gonna read the first Conan comic ever released by Marvel, the now legendary issue number one, written by Roy Thomas and with incredible artwork by Barry Windsor Smith. So, without further ado, let's jump right into the action. The Coming of Conan Come with us to the Hyborian Age. Come with us back to the dark centuries which sprawl between the sinking of Atlantis and the dawn of recorded time, to the days when the now-forgotten land of Aquilonia was the mightiest of nations, and a man's life was worth no more than the strength of his sword arm. Come with us to the raw, untamed world of Conan the Barbarian. It is summer in Vanaheim, one of the northernmost of all the known or unknown lands, and the last traces of vagrant snow vanish like softly dying dreams on both mountain and plain. But this day, the blood-eyed sun looks down on the slash and savagery of combat, as a raiding party of Aesir do battle with the fierce-born Vanir. And foremost among the skirmishing, roaring barbarians is one with locks of darkest jet. Speak your prayers, stripling, for camp songs are sung in Vadaheim of the prowess of Gondor. My life is for me to give, not for you to take, and I do not choose to give it. Yet perhaps man shall sing one last song of boastful Gondor. If so, they'll say he was the first man of the Vanir to fall before the slicing sword of Conan the Cimmerian. Conan the Cimmerian. In time to come, a name to conjure with, but now Conan is merely a mighty food youth, fresh from his first taste of battle at Venarium, and become a mercenary with this raiding band from the nearby borders of windswept Asgard. The sound of stride and shouting draws him to the edge of the ridge on which he stands, nor do his night-dark eyes view the scene below with favor. That bearded Aesir, Besieged by a trio of yapping foes, no affair of mine. I've done my day's work for Asia Gold. Still, why should one lion die and three jackals live? By Krom, they should not, and by Krom, they shall not. Then, his blade cutting a deadly arc, the grim youth wades through the clangor of battle all the time seeing nothing save the valiant bearded Aesir and the three who beset him. He's down! The tall one is fallen! Then strike, for we cannot hold him long! You van your dogs, I'll... The next instant, a bolt of living lightning and two men of Vanaheim shall never rise again. Huh, if you can handle two of these dark pigs, dark hair... Surely Olaf will have no trouble with the third. I never thought you would, my friend. Insolent youth, just because you saved my life, don't dare to call me friend until I tell you- Wait, what is it the others are shouting? They're fleeing, then we've won. That'll teach those red-haired scum to come sneaking over our borders when they can't even defend their own. Let's go after them! Don't chase them, let them run. He's right, lads. First we bind our wounds and bury our dead. Time enough them to carry the fight to the dog's own camp. You take command quickly, boy, for one I saw join our party only this morning. But you don't seem to know it's Olaf who gives the orders here. What is your name? I am Conan, a Sumerian. And a young one at that, you're a long way from home, boy. Got the wanderlust, eh? Well, you saved my weathered hide, sure enough. And here's my hand for it. Tell me, why'd you join our band instead of theirs? We both pay off in good northern gold. But you Aesir pay more. 
Uh, honest Sumerian, eh? Well, Olaf likes that. Now I figure that those dogs will stop to rest in that pass yonder. So we climb around and take them from above. What think you of that, lad? You pay, so you lead. You know, Conan, I think perhaps you are too honest. And besides, you talk too much. While not far distant, behind hastily erected defenses, the bone-weary men of Vanaheim weigh their chances. Another straggler, bearing his dead comrade. This morning, we outnumbered our foemen. Now, our forces are halved. Cursed be the day we first looted the border towns of Asgard. Soft, lad, lest your grumbling reach the ears of Wolf himself. And, apart from his man, sits their leader, tall and lithe, his mind alive with the wild cunning of the beast whose hide he wears, the wily wolf. The man grow restive, mighty one, fearful. And not without cause, Hotar. With Gondur dead, we have no warrior who can stand against Grim Olaf, or the dark-haired Kor who saved him. My men are cutthroats, but not stupid ones. They know full well that ere the sun says they hold this gorge with their life's blood. But just because they must die, Hotar, does it follow that we must perish with them? I see your meaning, Great Wolf. Men of the Northlands, heed my words. Hotar and I go to call upon the gods to seek their favor this day. You will remain here until the hour when we return. Aye, wolf. You said our men were fools, great wolf. Yet, did cattle ever await slaughter more willingly? They'll flee after they've bowled it over long enough. But even then, they'll form a buffer between us and the vengeful Aesir. Oh, what is this I see before me? A cave with strange symbols above its entrance. And a ghostly glow from somewhere within. Come, let's see what lies beyond these stone portals. Enter, wolf. Enter, Hotar. I have been waiting for you. An old man is in his death itself, and a young girl. Who are they to dwell in these lonely hills, and how did the old one know our names? That we learn, Hotar, when we accept their invitation. Perhaps they can guide us through these mountains to a place where our pursuer can never find us. Follow me, but be on guard for Aesir trickery. You'll find no gold thrust treachery here, wily one. My hair, when I did have it, was scarlet as your own. By the gods, this place is a cave without and a temple within. If not else, we can hide here for a time. I still say, beware. And I say scoffer that you need not fear Sharkosh, he who is called the Shaman. Your coming was foretold to me in a vision I had when I last gazed into yonder star stone. Years ago it fell from the many jeweled sky. Then perhaps you can call up forth as we mate yet bring me victory. That I can for a prize. I have need of a strong young warrior captive far mightier than either of you. There be such among your foemen, no? Aye, your words would best fit the useful dark hair who battles on the side of the Aesir. But tell me, with the powers you say you have, why do you need such a one? That is my affair. Suffice it to say, it concerns the virtuous handmaiden who sits beside me. She, whose smile has made more bearable an old man's self-exile. Well, are my terms agreed to? What have I to lose? Unleash your phantom army. I have no need of a full army man of the Vanir. Now be silent and you will observe marvels such as are whispered about over slowly dying campfires. Then, from the old shaman's lips hisses an incantation that was old when Atlantis sank, a spell such as once was muttered among the purple-towered cities of ancient, evil Acheron. A living fire seems to grow, unbanked, within the sky and jewel, 
An eerie, putrid glow fills each crevice of the rock-hewed chamber. And then, the star stone begins to hum. The Vanya skulk about below, suspecting nothing. You were wisely chosen to avenge the recent border raids, Olaf. But why do you skull so? Because, Stripling, the leader wolf is not among them. He must have fled his nose-sniffing disaster in the wind. How can the escape of one lone foe mar your joy, Olaf? You don't know him, Conan. As long as he lives, no Aesir can sleep with Bo's eyes closed. Still, we of Aesgard have a saying. If the wolf be not at home when you come to call, then slay its pups! Attack my brothers! The Aesir have found us! Wolf, where's Wolf the Wily? Perhaps you'll greet him one day soon in the Hall of Shades. And now, hold. What sound is that? Like the beating of a thousand angry wings. Not a thousand youth, only three pairs, but fixed to the bodies of monsters. Look, they're in the heavens. At the horrid demon horde which descends upon us. Crumb. Flee, what man forge blade can fend off bad winged devils? Down upon the startled tribesmen swoop the trio from beyond. Nor do they spare either Aesir or Vanir in their deadly voiceless assault. Yet, one man stands his ground and is rewarded by a cry such as no living man has heard. The things can be heard! Then, to me, lads, we'll still save the day! But the day is not for saving, as opinion shape springs upon Olaf from behind and he crumples in a lifeless heap. Olaf, dead. And now, Black Talons switch from my throat. For the past few fateful seconds, young Conan has held back from the one-sided battle. For, above all else, the barbarous Sumerians do fear things supernatural. But now, at the sight of a valiant life snuffed out like the merest candle, the fierce spell is broken. Be you demon or divine, heaven sent or spawned in hell, Olaf shall be avenged. But the barbarian's only answer is the forceful flapping of two dark wings. A sudden sensation of weightlessness which loosens his sword grip. A bony hand against which all his youthful strength is useless. Then, the feeling of being dropped like some broken rag doll towards peaks on which a blanket of snow still lingers. And finally, a nameless, all-consuming blackness. An eternity later, Conan drifts back to the waking world, escorted by the touch of soft fingers, the wafting trace of an exotic scent, the caress of a girl's hushed voice. Arise, young barbarian, your time is almost come, calls Conan back from the place of dreams. I am Terra, so called by the great shaman. Shaman? Am I, then, the prisoner of a sorcerer? You speak quickly to the point. My master is perhaps a sorcerer of sorts, but his powers are not truly his own. They all derive from the star stone, which foretold even that you would be delivered unto us. What does he want of me? Am I to be sacrificed upon some pagan altar? No, handsome one. There shall be no sacrifice, but only a trade. A trade? But what? Say no more, but keep silent. Through yon wooden bars, the ceremony begins. Then, Colin's blood runs cold as he beholds anew the winged demons. Near them, two smirking Vanir, and a wizened old one who can only be the shaman. O oh, star stone, sacred jewel which fell like rain from on high. The Vanya man still scoffers, not true believers in your awesome power. Give us a sign of that power, so that the ceremony transferal may be accomplished. Then, before the amazed eyes of Vanir and Sumerian alike, a vision fills the darkened chamber, a scene of a world that once was. Behold, Volusia, mightiest mainland kingdom in the days before Atlantis sank. Even I have never before delved so far into the past. More, great stone, tell us more. Yes, 
Shaman and savages gazed deeply. See the latter days of Volusia, when the land was oft ruled by barbarian monarchs, and when the greatest of these usurpers was the outcast Atlantean King Cal. Watch in horror now, as the cataclysm rocks the world, as earthquakes and volcanoes change the face of a planet, as Volusia herself fades into legend. And the thirst crazed oceans drink the island man called Atlantis. Next, behold a baby born not twenty winters ago, on a battlefield in Samaria, amid a raid by the fearsome Barnia. Look upon that babe, now grown to young manhood, receiving his baptism of fire and sword at distant Venarium, but a winter gone. And now, be witness to the most awesome sight of all, as this barbarian, amidst a hailing populace, crowns himself king of a mighty Hyborian empire. Hold! Tis not the past we see now, but the future. Yet, the Sumerian can have no future, for he is to be offered upon in the ceremony of transferal. I must see more, still more. While nearby young Conan wastes few precious moments trying to fathom the mysteries of time and space, but continues to test the bars of his makeshift prison. And still, the vision stands madly on, revealing man hurled back into an age of stone and beginning anew his slow upward climb towards wonders undreamed of, even in this, the height of the Hyborian Age. By the gods, I seem to be hauled far of Stygia under another name, in another time. I must see more. I must know more. More. Stop, old man. You're going too far. We were not meant to look on things like this before their time. But the wide-eyed shaman heeds not, as the image of man's ultimate conquest floods the pit-dark chamber, and the earth, the center of primitive man's small universe, is left far, far behind. Wolf, what madness is this? The stars! The stars! These sights have driven the old man mad! Then, even as that cry still echoes, Conan, stop! You'll be slain! Then let me die a warrior's death, not penned up like some sheep ripe for slaughter. The Cimmerian has broken free! He's far stronger than we thought! Kill him! Maybe you will, but first I'll see you star stones shattered from its death. I know came the winged devils which slew valiant Olaf, but you'll call force no more fiends from beyond. Not while there is yet breath in Conan's body and strength in Conan's arm. Death to the harbingers of hell! Conan's simple barbarian mind could not have guessed what happens next. As the star stone strikes the chamber wall and erupts in a blazing paroxysm which scatters demon and raider alike. While the young Sumerian scoops up the lethe form of the girl called Tara and flees in mortal terror for both their lives. And behind them, the winged ones fade swiftly back into that dim netherworld which spawned them like straws consumed by a holocaust, while the dying shaman shouts unavailing spells into the raging inferno, and Wolf the wily learns at last that all his trickery has but lighted his way to flaming death. For... Even as Conan bears his lovely burden into the open air, a fiery explosion rocks the cavern behind them. You fool! You barbarian fool! You have doomed me! Cursed the moment of weakness when I felt pity for you! Doomed? Nay, you're safe now, out of that madman's clutches. You still do not comprehend, but you shall, in a few fleeting moments... What are you raving about, women? Have I saved you from the fires with only to have you mouse nonsense? Crumbs devils! What vile sorcery is this? The female I carried from the cave is changed into one of the winged demons! So you would call me mortal? Not long ago, the old shaman whisked me from my universe within the shattered star stone, transformed me into an earthly handmaid to light his lonely days. But he could not keep me here forever, unless another took my place. 
in my distant world. And that other was to be Conan? Aye, and so you knew at last the secret of the ceremony of transferal. But now, my own cosmos calls me to endure internally the hellish flames which flicker there. Fare thee well, mortal, and recall one day the terror found you. Wonder upon wonder. The winged one is gone. To worlds where no man can follow. Then there is no more need for spoken words, for none are left alive to hear them. Smoke pours from the shaman's cavern, dark herald of the death that all within have died. Nightwing thoughts flit across Conan's brain, memories of the dread deeds of the day just done. The slaying of a valiant friend, the marvels of an invisible world revealed, images of many towered cities and dying continents and... and... and kings. Aye, wasn't there something about a kingdom? A vision of Conan as a monarch of some unguessed at land? But already... The image fades, too long ago and too fantastic to trouble the mind of a youth who has neither dagger nor venison to sustain him. The moon is a wide watching eye, the journey home is hard, and there are no realities worth the wishing, save food and a finely wrought sword. The End Well folks, thanks for listening to this narration of Marvel's issue number one of Conan the Barbarian. If you enjoyed this content, there will be more. So please do as our favorite Sumerian would do. Crush that subscribe button, see that YouTube content driven before you, and hear the lamentations of YouTubers who are too weak to enjoy sword and sorcery. Till next time.